وعلى اهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين اما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ولا نبلونكم بشيء من الجوع والخوف ونقص من الاموال والانفس والثمرات وبشر الصابرين الذين اذا اصابتهم مصيبه قالوا انا لله وانا اليه راجعون please recite a salawat <coughs> Respected listeners, my dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the holy book, we are surely going to test you with fear, hunger, loss of property, loss of life, and loss of fruit. And one interpretation of fruit is fruit of your heart, which means children. And further, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَبَشِّرَ الصَّابِرِينَ And give glad tidings to those who are the patient ones. Those when a musibat falls them, befalls them, a calamity befalls them, they say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raja'oon. We are for Allah. We are Allah's property. And to him is our return. Now this verse is of course for all the believers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests all the believers. And even all human beings with different things. He says, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ Fear and hunger. And then continues naqsam min al-ambal and so on. When it comes to Imam Hussain alayhi salam and his companions, they were tested with all of that. Fear, hunger, thirst, loss of wealth, loss of property, loss of life, loss of children. All the members of the Ahlul Bayt who were present in Karbala went through that. On top of that, there were more things that Sayyida Zainab had to go through. All of that plus disaster management. She had to manage a great disaster. She was tested with all that. And then there were burnt tents, children, thirsty, traumatized, crying, and she had to take care of them. On top of that, Imam Sajjad alayhi salam, who was ill, she had to take care of him as well. Sayyida Zainab was not an ordinary woman. Throughout the history of mankind, no one has been like Zainab and no one can ever be like Zainab. This we need to understand. We need to understand the maqam of Zainab. It is not easy. We've been listening to the Musaib throughout our lives, Shami Gariba. And God forbid, sometimes perhaps, and please forgive me for saying this, we tend to take these things for granted. We do not reflect on the greatness of the deeds of Sayyida Zainab in that age and time. Today, when we get a little wound, we start to become worried. God forbid if someone's child becomes injured, God forbid, they start to lose their mind. They start to become so anxious and worried. They don't know which number to dial, what to do. Sayyida Zainab saw all that throughout the day. Throughout the day, in a distant land, foreign land, 
surrounded by the enemy, a cursed enemy. Throughout the day, bloodshed, rattling of swords, neighing of horses, chants of the enemy, blood, 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 body after body of her sons, her brothers, her nephews, and all that. And after that, what I'm going to recite in a bit, the real Musiba that is going to start now. And still, she managed. She did disaster management. And there was a reason that Imam Hussain alayhi salam had handed over Sayyidu Sajideen to Sayyida Zainab. Although he was her Imam and he told her that she should obey him, should follow him, but still handed over. And let me say, let me say, just like Sayyida Fatima to Zahra used to take care of the Holy Prophet, Sayyida Zainab took care of Sayyidu Sajideen. That way she took care of the Waliullah, not because he was her nephew. And she had supported Imam Hussain alayhi salam, not because he was just her brother. No, she had that ma'rifah. He was her Imam. He was Hujjatullah. He was Waliullah. This we need to understand. And the first episode of Karbala ended at the time of Asr of Ashur. And the second episode started. The test of Hussein ended. And the test of Zainab, Umm Kulthum, Sayyidu Sajideen, and the others started. And this test is going to be long, hard, difficult. And let me say much more difficult than the first episode. Much more difficult. Today, if we exist as believers, as Shia, today, if Islam exists, it is because of Zainab. If it was not for her, it would have ended then and there. Then and there. Today, we commemorated the martyrdom of our master, Imam Hussain alayhi salam. We shed tears. We did matam. We remembered our master. And after that, we went home. We drank water. We drank sweet drinks. We got to eat lunch. We had roof above our heads. We had beds and everything. But the children of the Holy Prophet in Karbala, when Imam Hussain alayhi salam was martyred, they were all traumatized in their tents. When Imam Hussain alayhi salam was martyred, you know how they got to know about his martyrdom? The horse of Imam Hussain alayhi salam, Dhul Janah. Why is, it, why is it called Dhul Janah? Because it had like so many arrows pierced into its two sides that it seemed to have two wings. Therefore, its name is Dhul Janah, the one which has wings. So many arrows were shot at the Imam. Dhul Janah smeared its mane and its forehead in the sacred blood of Imam Hussein and started running towards the tents. When the horse came to the tents, the ladies saw that the Imam was not riding the horse. They understood that Imam Hussain had been martyred. They started to lament and cry, started to beat their heads. It's written in some books of Maktal that they started to do matam and beat on their heads. And then Zuljana went behind the tents. It's written in some books of Maqdal that Zuljana started hitting its head on the ground of Karbala. And it 
kept hitting its head. It kept hitting its head until it died. Even, even Dhul Janah, which was an animal, had more ma'rifa of the Imam than those accursed men. And then, as if it was not sufficient what they had done, Umar ibn Sa'd ordered his accursed soldiers to fix the horses. Because Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, the accursed, had written in a letter to Umar ibn Sa'd, when you have killed Hussein, trample the horses on his body. Umar ibn Sa'd said, who will volunteer to do this job? Shimmer the accursed again. It took 10 horsemen with him. And I do not have the heart to say, they started to trample the hooves of horses on the sacred body of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And they crushed his back and his chest. And then, Umar ibn Sa'd the accursed, his soldiers went towards the tents. They started to loot the tents. Whatever they could get their hands on. All the properties of the Ahlul Bayt. And you know what? They started to snatch the veils of the holy granddaughters of the holy prophet. <laughs> Sayyidah Zainab. Sayyidah Umm Kulthum. Sayyidah Sakina. It is written in some books of Maqtal that Ruqayya, the four-year-old daughter of Imam Hussein, she always used to prepare the prayer rug for Imam Hussein alayhi salam. On the day of Ashura, she prepared the prayer mat, the prayer rug, but her father never came. She was waiting for her father in, in his tent. That Shimur entered with one of his slaves. And in all her innocence, that girl asked Shimur, Have you seen my father? Have you seen my father? <laughs> Shimur the younger said, became so furious. He said to his slave, Beat her up! Beat her up! When he hesitated, then Shimur the younger said himself, Move forward! And he slapped her so hard! Then her earrings fell off her ears. <laughs> the accursed enemy entered the tents, <laughs> snatched the veils, <laughs> and then they left. Then they came back, and they found 23 children from the Ahlul Bayt, grandchildren of the Holy Prophet, 23 small children who are all on the verge of dying. It is written in some books of Maqtal. They were so thirsty and traumatized that they were shivering. One accursed man, he said to Umar ibn Sa'd, if you want to take them to Kufa and then Syria, they will not survive on the way. They will die. Give them some water. Give them some water. At that moment, that accursed man did give some water to those children. It is written in some books of Maqtal. When, when Ruqayya got some water, she started walking towards the battlefield. Someone said, what are you going to do? She said, my father was thirsty, I have heard. I'm taking this water to my father. I'm taking this water to my father. Now, it's about the time that the sun is going to set. The day of Ashura has been very long. The land of Karbala has witnessed the worst atrocities in the history of mankind. But the day is going to come to an end. And then the accursed enemy, as if what they had done was not sufficient. They come towards the tents again, just about the time of sunset. And they say out loud, Ahriqu buyut al-zalimeen. <laughs> Set the houses of the Zalimin on fire. 
set the houses of the oppressors on fire. They called the Ahlul Bayt the oppressors. They set the tents on fire. And the women and the children, traumatized, start to run from one tent to another. In that moment, Sayyid Zainab went to Sayyid Sajideen. Oh, my nephew, oh, my imam, tell us what to do. Should we stay without veils inside the tents or should we run? And the imam said, Go save your lives. Run out of the tents. The daughters of the Holy Prophet started running in search of safety from one tent to the next, from one tent to the next. All the tents were set on fire. The women are traumatized. The children are traumatized. This Ummah did not do justice to the Holy Prophet and his progeny. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Holy Prophet, I say to them, I do not want anything in return for all the work of prophethood, except that you love my family, except that you love my progeny. This is how they thank the Holy Prophet. Why? While reciting his kalama, while saying Ashadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah, this is how they treated his family. The tents are burning, the children are traumatized, and then the night falls. Sayyida Zainab starts looking for all the children. Two children she cannot find, two children from the family of the Holy Prophet. They are nowhere. Sayyida Zainab looks for them until she finds them in one place and she moves them. What happened to them? You know what? Two children, they had hugged each other, but they had died out of thirst and trauma. Two children. Sayyida Zainab is sitting next to the burning tents. There is fear in the atmosphere. Some children are crying. Some have already gone unconscious. Some are asleep. And then... All of a sudden, she cannot find Ruqayya anywhere. She cannot find Ruqayya. The heart of Zainab starts to sink. Where is Ruqayya? Where is Ruqayya? She goes around looking for Ruqayya. She goes around. She cannot find Ruqayya anywhere. She cannot find Ruqayya anywhere. It is written in some books of Maqtal. She goes to the battlefield and she sees, she sees Ruqayya clinging onto the body a headless body. She finds Rukaya crying and she asks, Rukaya, what are you doing? Rukaya says, this is the body of my father. Sayyidah Sayyidah brings Rukaya back but asks, how do you know this is the body of your father? How do you know? Rukaya says, when I went near that body, it said to me, come Rukaya, come to me. <laughs> Come, Rukhaya, come to me. Ala la'natullahi ala al-qawm al-zalimeen. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna min al-khasirin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajjal farajahum al-an a'da'ihim ajma'in. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.